first, mainly on the first and the last ones. Dr. Steve is going to talk about a technology. Now, um, on your screen is a very interesting book, and I really recommend it. Uh, interesting title, too, Why Men Die First. And this lady, she's a, a very well-respected doctor in New York, and this book just came out this year. I, I, I've been going through it, and it has a lot of great information. Uh, yeah, it is a fact that men leave before their, their wives or their spouses, and um, one of the reasons, which she gave many reasons, right from conception to to uh, to the to the pregnancy, it seems like men are a little, little bit at a higher risk than women are. Anyway, lots of great stuff there. She talks about all kinds of the diseases that more, men are more prone to. So I encourage you to get it. However, uh, she talks keeps on bringing up the question of risk factors. E.g., for instance, if for lung lung cancer, a good risk a common risk factor developed that is smoking. And of course, with heart disease, a common, a common risk factor is high cholesterol. Anyway, as I'm reading this, uh, it, uh, this thought just hits me. And I'm thinking, well, here we are talking about risk factors. Well, why don't we talk about um, things that will help to build your health? Not just about the risk factors, but things that help to build your, your, your health. Because with risk factors, basically what they're saying with risk factors is that if you do these things, you are more likely to get it. Well, let's, let's, let's flip that and say, well, if you do these things, you are less likely to get certain conditions. Let me give you a quick example. In cultures around the world that have a very high diet, and a diet rich in fiber, a diet rich in fiber, in many of those cultures, um, things like colorectal ca um, carcinoma, cancer of the, of the, of the, of the gut, is, is rare because, in a way, high fiber diet puts you in a position to avoid um, the toxins and the things that actually damage your colon and predispose you to cancer. So my whole thought is, well, why don't we focus on building strength? And so that's really the, the whole idea and the philosophy we see behind our webinars. And we are so, so glad to have um, Dr. Steve here because he's really been a, a wonderful help. And he's, he's got very um, people on the call for us to some guests to come and speak to us on different topics. And um, of course, if you, many of you probably remember this guy, his name is Dr. Harry Elwood, and he just came to speak about that Nobel Prize winning technology concerning arginine and the nitric, nitric oxide pathway. We now know that it is quite possible for your body to repair damaged blood vessels and also remove plaques, I mean, even the worst kinds, and it has been proven in the lab. So. Uh, and again, we had him on our webinar a couple of times, and actually, we, we, have a, we have a PowerPoint of the presentation and an MP3 available, don't we, Sherry? Yes, it is on the home page. Okay, great. So it's on the home page, and if you ever want, if you want to listen to it, uh, it's available at a, at a cheap rate, and you can just go straight there and, and listen to it. Remember, all what we're talking about are just pieces of the puzzle. There is no one thing that works for everyone. So uh, again, the idea is for you to keep getting informed, keep, keep getting more information, and hopefully you'll be able to piece things together and do what is best for you and your family. All right, I've said a lot. <laughs> it's time to, for us to talk about our guest. And Sherry, we want to, you want to uh, introduce Dr. Steve? I would love to. Thank you, David. OK, Dr. Sami. He graduated from Western State College of Colorado in 1976 with a BSc in biology, emphasizing human performance, anatomy and physiology, with a minor in psychology and health education. He completed his doctor of chiropractic degree in 1980, graduating from Logan College in St. Louis, Missouri, and has been in active practice ever since. Where the state requires 15 hours per year of continuing med medical education, Dr. Summy has averaged over 50 hours each year of postgraduate education. He is the owner of Summy Wellness Center, a multidisciplinary practice in Longmount, Colorado, which provides massage therapy, physical rehabilitation, reflexology, meridian therapy, laser therapy, as well as the latest chiropractic technology, the Pro Adjuster. The Wellness Center also has a nutrition department, which utilizes research based on validated product lines. The newest services offered at the center are cardiovascular screening and bone density testing. 
providing valuable data and immediate results to the client. Dr. Summy lectures on a variety of topics and is licensed in HeartMath, the only scientifically proven system of stress reduction on the market. Back to you. Well, great. And Dr. Steve, well, without much further ado, we just want to say thank you for all you've done and continue, all you're continuing to do. And thank you for joining us on the webinar tonight. Well, you're welcome, Dr. David. And uh, thank you so much, Sherry, for that nice introduction. It's an honor to be invited on a call like this. And I want to say thank you to, to you guys, too, for your dedication and just uh, willingness to spend time and uh, I think most of the people listening to this call may not appreciate the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. Dr. David, I know, is up oftentimes late hours of the night, and so is Sherry correcting his mistakes. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> That's true, too. We ain't got to have Sherry keep us on track here. So, um, yep. Sherry, I'm uh, um, wondering if, uh, if we can turn over to my... Uh, desktop here and then we can I know Dave has got the version I, I put a couple of corrections in the PowerPoint so yeah oh, okay. a little box will come up at, uh, asking you if you will accept being the presenter yeah and so it's, do I just click on show my screen yes okay and <laughs> oh you know what there it is okay it just looked so much slimmer because David had the same one there. There we are. Can you guys see that? Yes. We sure do. All right. And we've gone through that one. We've gone through Carl Sagan. I love, uh, I think this is Dr. David's, uh, I can't remember if it's Dr. David's or Michael, but we both love Dr. Carl Sagan. Um, you know, I just realized that uh, mine, mine was uh, uh, changed and it went kind of off the screen, but basically somewhere something uh, is happening. Something is credible waiting to be incredible is waiting to be known. And, and that's kind of what we're looking at here is we're, we, we're already past the, the uh, several phases here, but we're on the verge of some pretty amazing things. And with science and computer technology, with the acceleration of knowledge, um, it, it's amazing to, to know uh, what's, at, what's out here over the last hundred years to see what kind of changes. Just think about what the next 50 years or next hundred years are going to hold for us. So um, tonight we're going to talk about healthy heart and stress. And this is my version of how we handle stress. One of the reasons why people come in to see me, one of the major reasons is kind of the generic word that we all use, I think, a lot is stress. And, uh, and I've Particularly, in fact, I got introduced to heart math by this lovely woman, my wife, fiance, wife. Uh, we're going to be married uh, in the U.S. officially, but uh, we've exchanged uh, wedding vows. And so um, Leslie actually uh, introduced me to this um, up in Canada because the RN, she's a, a, a nurse and a health clinician in the uh, Psyche Merge department in a couple of major hospitals up in Calgary. And so they, they looked at um, what would help these individuals with stress. And uh, so the, um, this, the Emerge Hospital were, was training the nurses on this technology called HeartMath. And I learned that in a uh, Swedish hospital down in Denver, they were training them on this same thing. And all over the country, in fact, I, I got on uh, like I usually do, and I researched, uh, I looked up uh, HeartMath, and I found uh, the incredible amount of research that they actually have out there. They've been going for about 15 years. And so um, so really, um, that, that's my heart right there is with, with Leslie, and, and we've got a, a, just a great relationship, and, and it's really wonderful to be able to then help other individuals understand a little bit more about uh, all these wonderful things uh, that are, that are um, key in understanding this human heart. So we typically think about the heart as as just simply a pump. And of course it is. It's a very wonderfully reliable pump. It's about 100,000 times a day that it's beating. And uh, thank goodness we don't have to think about it. Um, the main purpose we thought it was just circulate blood through the body. Well, now that we know uh, institutions like uh, the Institute of Heart Mass uh, is existing. And there's other institutions out there, but these guys, in my opinion, have the best research of anyone. Dr. Steve? And so, yes. Oh, okay. I just uh, I wanted to make sure I 
Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Keep keep going. It, it was a problem with my computer. Go keep going. Okay, I was actually going to give a, a couple of references. When I first learned about uh, heart math, uh, there's a book out uh, called The Heart Math Solution, and it's by Doc Childry and Howard Martin, um, who uh, founded Heart Math. And uh, that's a wonderful book on basically the subtitle is uh, Discover How You Can Immediately Lower Stress Hormones, Raise the Anti-Aging DHEA Hormone Level. Uh, DHEA is, is a precursor to about 54 hormones in the body, and it's produced by the adrenal gland. So when we're stressed, that's oftentimes what's uh, impacted uh, adversely is the adrenal glands. Um, the subtitle also goes on saying how to improve your heart rate for maximum uh, longevity, maintain emotional clarity in the midst of chaos, and achieve peak mental and intuitive performance. A lot of a lot of men, uh, I think, have a little difficulty with that word intuition. Women don't have any problem with it because they've been using their heart and oftentimes do a better job of communication. I think that's where we, that book that, that referenced the longevity factor, I think that's one of the reasons why men don't live as long is because we hold too many things in oftentimes. We don't get it out, and it mm -hmm. just the stress just keeps building. That's, that's exactly what he talks about, too. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, so anyway, let's kind of move forward here because I want to spend a little bit of time, maybe have, have some question and answers at the end. Um, the heart really is a four-way communication system. Uh, it's, it's this pump, yes, it's a wonderful pump beating uh, about three million times in a lifetime, 48 million gallons. Uh, that's a lot of blood. Uh, the work that the heart does in one day, and I'm sorry, in one hour is enough to raise a ton three feet off the ground. A ton of weight, three feet off the ground. That's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. So this is a typical thing we think about the heart is the electrocardiogram. Well, there is an electrical uh, system, and it's the bundle of, of uh, his, and it's the sinoatrial node and the atrial ventricular, ventricular node and this whole Purkinje system. There's actually now understood that there's more than 40,000 neurons in the heart. And there, we'll talk a little bit about this later. There was actually a new, uh, sci new uh, specialty that's been created for this particular reason. It's, it's called neurocardiology. So there's also a biochemical or hormonal component uh, to the heart. These uh, uh, tissues, uh, actually back in 83, they found out that the uh, uh, heart tissues produce this uh, atrial uh, naturetic factor. Uh, which affects the blood vessels, the adrenal glands, the kidneys. Um, and also there's a oxytocin that's present. And that's actually, a, a lot of women know oxytocin uh, is present during uh, contractions and uh, also during uh, breastfeeding. And right after birth, it can help with that processing and, and excretion of the uh, placenta. And, but it's a bonding hormone. And, uh, and that's obviously, we, we don't bond uh, head to head <laughs> we both with somebody. When you fall in love with somebody, you bond, you know, heart to heart, and that's where a lot of our emotions are are felt. Is actually in the chest, not in the head. Mm -hmm. This is obviously a picture of uh, blood vessels and the erythrocytes simply flowing through there. So the heart does an incredible job of doing that. So we've got this other thing that's called the energetic part of the heart. It's the most powerful generator of this type of electromagnetic field. It's actually 60 times more in magnitude than the brain, and it's 5,000 more from a magnetic field standpoint, 5,000 times more than the strength of the brain's magnetic field. Wow. And it can't be detected several feet away. When you use these magnetometers, you can actually uh, detect uh, these magnetic fields of the heart. And actually, uh, heart math is doing some pretty incredible things from a large uh, global coherence uh, uh, process in terms of being able to, to look at large populations. Uh, but um, that's kind of another subject. But if you, if you do go to uh, www.heartmath.org and just go to the Global Coherence Project, it's a pretty amazing thing that's going on. Um, so we have the capacity to affect others around us, and we all know that. These are things that we don't really talk a lot about, but you come into a group of people, a crowd, let's say, maybe after church or after a, uh, maybe at a party, and when you come close to people, you have a feeling. You have a, maybe some people would call it an intuition, and you sometimes know, and sometimes you click right away, and it's like, wow, I, I think I know you. 
Well, this is this is part of the heart, and this is this heart-brain synchronization. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. So, you know, it's something that just opens up a whole field of, of uh, things that we typically don't put into words, but we know it because we feel it. So, again, more on this heart-brain phenomenon later. All right, so let's get into uh, stress. Or actually, we're going to talk about stress reduction, but we've got to talk about what, what does stress mean. A lot of people think it's a negative experience, but really, from a biological point of view, uh, it can be neutral. It could be both positive or negative. And uh, we know from a uh, uh, study of, of uh, a man that we have this ability to adapt as a species to stress. It's one of the things that makes us very unique on this planet. And so stress actually is what causes these adaptive changes to occur, these uh, evolutionary changes or genetic changes. And so is it really all bad? Um, sometimes stress will release these quite powerful neurochemicals and these hormones that prepare us for action. So, you know, if, if you're out uh, on the street and you hear screeching tires, uh, is stress a bad thing? Stress causes those adrenal glands to kick in the uh, uh, adrenaline, and you better get your muscles ready to move and quickly get out of the way. So that's a good thing. But obviously, when we have this fight or flight thing going on way too long, that'll start to wear at us. It'll start to wear at our immune system and, and cause all kinds of issues like sleep cycle disorders and, and irritability and things like that. So if, if we don't, uh, Hans Selye talks about this in his uh, book, Stress Without Distress. He was one of the first endocrinologists, a Canadian, to, uh, to say that there is such a thing as as a normal stress, but that if stress gets too much, then our body goes through these three phases. It, it's an alarm phase, quick flight or fight relaxation. If it's, and you can adapt to that to a certain point. That's the second phase is the adaptive response. And the third phase is the exhaustion phase. And that's when stuff starts breaking down. And that's when our immune system can no longer keep up with the stressors. Maybe it's a chemical stress or a lack of nutrient stress and things like this that l then leads to disease processes, cancers and heart disease and things like this. So here's my disclaimer. This is not a HeartMath webinar. Uh, HeartMath has their own webinars and they do a wonderful job on that and, and so we're going to be talking about how I handle these stress issues personally and also in my practice with my patients. And so um, HeartMath actually was developed uh, and it has developed these, these highly successful programs that uh, my fiance uh, slash wife, Leslie, and I have gotten uh, certified in. We're one-on-one -on -one providers. And uh, for self-improvement, both mental, emotional, and also for physical balance. Um, the technology materials are not intended to replace any kind of treatment, medical or psychological uh, treatments by licensed physicians or psychologists or any other healthcare professionals. So now that we've got that out of the way, we know that we have in this country the most stressed out people on the planet. You know, it's go, 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 push, push, push. Um, we don't have enough time in the day to get all the things we want to get done. And so we've got all these external stressors, uh, family, career, relationships, money, kids, you know, the war, gas prices, uh, elections voting, grades, you know, if you're going to school, you know, we got these grades of other people's expectations of us. This could be quite a stressful thing. Then those internal stress factors, smoking, drinking, junk food, anxiety, uh, toxins. There's a really good little uh, website that's called scorecard.org. And, uh, and that can basically show you in your particular area, tell you, put in your, your zip code or whatever, and then it'll tell you what your um, stress factors are as far as toxins. So this is uh, a couple of definitions of stress, but we know that there's a lot of wear and tear uh, that the body experiences, everyday tensions and pressures, changes in, uh, it change, a lot of change can cause stress, illness, injury, uh, career lifestyle changes are very common. There's a Holmes Ray stress test that, that measures a lot of these um, major stressors and kind of gives you a rating of what your stress quotient is. Uh, but really what stress is, is the emotional pressure and the tension we feel in response to these things that are coming at us all the time. And uh, you. Yes. Do you, uh, let me ask this, um, because I like to always get to the bottom line in some things. Uh, if you were to mention the top 
three emotional stressors that we should avoid at all costs, for instance, what, 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 which three would jump to, to your mind or would leap to your mind? Well, you know, they, we were kind of going in that direction, but, uh, you know, everybody is different. And, and it really is not so much, you've heard this statement, it's not so much what happens to us as what happens within us. Right, now, right. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing you can do about death of a spouse. That's, that's something that happens to us. And there's going to be some stress involved in that. And, uh, but if you don't have the tools to be able to handle those things that happen to us, so I'm kind of avoiding that, answering that question because it's going to be different for everybody. If you take a, a poll, yeah, you kind of get some, uh, some agreement. But I really think in, in general terms that it's really the person's, uh, and there's so many psychosocial factors that come into play, but a lot of times you can change that. Just because you reacted to it in the past doesn't mean that you have to be reacting to that stress or in the future especially when you have new knowledge and you can then do different actions. And so um, so I think we're going to answer that question, but, but is, is that okay if we just be generic about it? Sure, sure. Okay. So how does stress affect health? It really affects us in the mind, body, spirit, physically, mentally, emotionally. Uh, the Institute of Stress says that 90% of all health problems are related to stress. Now, at the beginning, I didn't, I didn't buy that so much because as a chiropractor, I'm thinking, no, it's, it's caused by uh, joint problems. It's caused by lifestyle issues. And, and, uh, but, you know, really, it, it's, yeah, the, the things, as you react to certain things, then you're going to have a certain lifestyle based on that reaction. Some people eat when they're stressed. Some people smoke when they're stressed. Some people, you know, have junk food and things. Like, some people exercise when, they, when they're stressed. Well, that, you know, there's certain things that we can do that are detrimental and certain things that we can do that are, healthy, if you exercise too much, then obviously there's, a, there's a, a certain limit to that as well. But when you start looking at the blood pressure, the disease, heart disease, the strokes, the depression, sleep disorders, um, a lot of these things are centered in the body's response uh, to these, these uh, factors in the environment. They're an emotional response, and we kind of generally term them stress. So now, if you have a, you should have a box somewhere on your computer that you can give us some input, and uh, maybe uh, Sherry or David could uh, read that. I'm sure I'll probably have that somewhere, but I'm actually paying more attention to my screen than, than the box, so they can maybe jump in. So just, if you want, to just put your first name in and just say, you know, what are some things that stresses you? Um, we know that, uh, you know, it's, it's nice when we can have some somewhat of an interactive uh, web webinar here, and so you know I've thrown out a lot of things here, um, but you know sleeplessness, Dr. David, is probably one of the top ones uh, right there. If a person is not getting sleep, and I think we've all gone through those phases where you know after a day or two of not sleeping very good, you don't respond very good to what's going on in your environment. You just like just completely physically or mentally or emotionally just don't handle things very well, and uh, so. Anyway, we know that uh, the economic situations that are going on, that puts a lot of stress on people, and, or I should say they react in a stressful way. And uh, the news, you know, somebody said uh, to a minister, they said, you need to take a news fast. He said, what do you mean a news fast? He said, by the, by the sound of your sermons, uh, it's all bad. He said, you, you, you must be reading the newspapers a couple times a day and watching the news programs two or three times a day. He said, how could you tell that? He said, it's because it's reflected in, in what you're saying. So he did go, he completely got off uh, the news because most of it's bad anyway. And, uh, and he said that it really made a big difference. We know that this stress increases the adrenal cortisol. And cortisol, you can measure it in the blood. Measure DHEA, they're kind of uh, uh, almost like on a teeter-totter. When one's high, the other one's low. And uh, one of the things that I, I don't think we've gone into, but if you go to heartmath.org and you look and you just type in cortisol, maybe cortisol and DHEA, you'll find their study. And their study showed that six weeks of doing what we're going to talk about at the end of the webinar, doing some of these stress-reducing uh, practices, six weeks will, will decrease cortisol by, I believe it was like 23%, and raise DHEA by 100% on the average, which is huge. 
we know that when cortisol is high, sleep disorders occur, irritability, anger, depression, cardiovascular disease, bone density problems, immune suppression, blood pressure. It, it affects just about everything adversely in the body. And so the American Institute of Stress, I think Sherry put this out on the uh, invitation on the webinar, that stress is at the root of burnout. And it costs the industry, U.S. industry, $300 billion. But more serious than that is the loss of, and Dr. David, I know you know a lot of guys that have been in that place. They've gotten burnout because of the emotional jo you know, job demands of, of uh, you know, oncology or, or radiologist or some of these guys that are especially emergency room doctors and nurses. That's one of the reasons why they use this in the emergency rooms in uh, Calgary and also uh, uh, taught the um, nurses in uh, Denver, and they're still teaching them these heart math uh, procedures because of that burnout situation. Mm -hmm. So the job turnover rate is quite high, and, and in many cases, uh, I know, for, for example, in my profession, uh, insurance is uh, just getting out of control. It's terrible. The, the lack of coverage, uh, the high rates of uh, premiums and copays and deductibles, but the low rates of coverage is really forcing a lot of doctors out of business. So there's a lot of stress everywhere, but particularly we've talked about this one at work. One of the things that it does, and Dr. David did such a good job on uh, talking about neuroendocrine system in, in one of his previous webinars, when, when you don't have a balance or you have a dysfunction in these hormones, the hormonal system, it causes this autonomic nervous system dysregulation, and it's just basically an imbalance. Um, you know, and we feel that by, uh, yeah, you, you sometimes need to get a blood test and go to the doctor and have an evaluation, but a lot of times we describe it as something's just not right. Uh, athletes typically say, uh, I'm not having a good day. I'm, my timing is off. Um, and, and, you know, the opposite, when, when everything is in balance, we call it being in the zone. HeartMath just did an uh, official uh, webinar last night on the zone. We know that the zone, everything is functioning at, a, at an optimal level. Your communication is good. Your coordination is good. Physically, when you have that mind-body working in synchronization, um, it's incredible the, the things that can happen in terms of physical performance. And also mental performance. I, I, hesitate, I, I don't hesitate to say that all great works of art and all great artists from a mu musical point of view, they're in a synchronized state, mind-body. Typically, they're not like all whacked out and you know drug addicted and all. <laughs> they they typically have pretty good balanced lives, and their their immune system and their neuroendocrine system is is fairly balanced. So, uh, the autonomic nervous system regulates 90% of our body functions. And I look at it like this: the sympathetic speeds things up, the parasympathetic nervous system slows things down. Those are two divisions of the autonomic nervous system. And it regulates 90% of what's going on in our body. Thank goodness we don't have to think about it because it's on automatic function. So this is going to be personalized to each one of you. What are you going to do about being stressed out? Or what can we do about being stressed out? Oh, my gosh, David, you slipped that picture in again. Oh, no. <laughs> Some people accuse me of having a big head in high school, but it was just my hair. So, well, I don't, know, I don't know how long it took you to grow that, but that looks like a piece of work right here, Steve. Yeah, well, it's getting, it's getting there. I'm letting it grow out again, so I better change this picture because it might make some people stressed. I can imagine a few. I can imagine a few girls that it must have stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one way or the other. Yes. So yeah, sometimes a little bit of wine can kind of calm us down, but then obviously you get a, too much, and there's a, there's some problems there. Uh, so here's what a lot of times we we think about and doing when we have stress. Adrenal support is very important, and, and you notice that's the number one thing. There's a lot of ways. We're not going to go into all that. Uh, David's had good webinars on nutritional adrenal support, um, time management. You know that, that can really easily get away from us. So. Getting that under control can really help a lot. And physically, you know, the hot tubs, the exercise. Okay, just breathe. Relax, everybody. Take a breath. Sit back. Get your posture right. Straighten your shoulders out. Did you notice how you were sitting when I, <laughs> when I said sit back and bring your shoulders back and take a deep breath? One of the things that does, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it just helps that heart-brain synchronization. Relaxation techniques oftentimes 
have these um, methods, these breathing uh, techniques involved, um, spiritual healing, social support, and we talked about the nutritional supplementation. So they're all helpful to one degree or another, but really the question is, how do I feel about some of those events that are happening to me? You know, what, this is what determines if you're stressed or not, is, is your emotions. And I know guys have a hard time with that, you know, how do you feel about this and how do you feel about that, but really it's, it's, a, it's an incredible thing. And, and I think a lot of times when a, a man has a heart attack or a stroke, oftentimes there is tremendous emotional release because they've been holding a lot of that stuff back. We know that part of that is, is the way the brain's affected from a stroke. But, uh, and, and of course, when the heart, that's a scary thing. When the heart starts to do funny things and we start thinking, uh-oh, is this, is this it? Is this the big one? Uh, those emotions can have a huge impact. And I, and I say to most guys, you need to kind of get in touch with that, get in touch with what's going on and, and look back at um, maybe some of the things that are really uh, eating at you, you know, bothering you. And uh, this is a great way of doing it. Um, this is reminding me of a place that uh, I, I visited in um, Jamaica, and, uh, and we were just in Bali, and we saw some very incredible places just like this. And you just kind of feel, just get, put yourself in that picture, and just take a couple of breaths. And uh, you know, everything is so green because it's so humid. And uh, boy, you know, you, we need to take a break physically. And I, I learned that a, a lot from. My uh, my wife, uh, Leslie, I learned a lot uh, that you got to take time to enjoy life and, and take a break from that push, 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 go, go, go. But we're talking about positive emotions, and uh, and I know uh, Dr. Bernie has has really covered a lot of this in his uh, Love Medicine Miracles, and Dr. David and he have done some great webinars uh, that I know they're going to be continuing to do some of these in, in the in the future. We know that the positive emotions. Uh, like appreciation, care, love, they not only feel good, but they're also healthy. They're healthy for our heart, and they actually help us produce these healing hormones. They help the body's organ systems in this synchronization process. And, and, and we use a term called coherence. We'll develop that in maybe in the next few slides here. Rene Dubois said that what happens in the mind of man is always reflected in the diseases of his body. And I agree with that. I see people that the more stressed they are, the more tension in their muscles. I see it every day in my practice and in the chiropractic and wellness center here. Hmm. So there's a lot of ways of, of handling stress. We covered a few of these things. You know, the spiritual aspect, I think, is a very important part of this whole process with meditation, spiritual healing, scriptural reading, regular attendance. At, at functions that are of like mind, and what it does is it gets you around people whose heart and mind oftentimes are very synchronous and oftentimes you'll start to identify with them and, and really it, it, it just raises everybody, raises everybody's feeling of, of caring for each other. Uh, Chris uh, Roythorn, uh, the chief medical officer of British Petroleum, mentioned that using some of these heart math techniques, uh, they have global a global organization, they have a huge organization all around the world and so this they said that this level of blood pressure reduction, if repeated in a large clinical trial, would reduce the incidence of stroke approximately 60%. That's huge. So we know that stress does have an impact on many areas, including the vascular system of the body. So there's other ways to handle stress, social, emotional support, uh, strength in close relationships. You know, I think what was maybe left out here, uh, pets. Um, that's a wonderful uh, uh, way of being able to show that love and caring for uh, another living organism. Right, right. Uh, even even right. fish. <laughs> well, well um, there's a research that's out there that says that um, dogs are actually the best stress relievers, even more than the spouse. <laughs> Well, you know, that's true, and I mean, if you think about it, if those of you who have had dogs, most of us have, they don't ever, you know, in a bad mood, and they don't see you unless you've, like, punished them inappropriately, but, you know, most of the time when they see you, they're wagging their tail, and they're happy, and they just want to be petted and loved, and, you know, most people reciprocate with that. So, obviously, we've got this uh, emotional support factor where you can strengthen close relationships, practice forgiveness and gratitude, become involved in work. Uh, that's in line with what you love to do. That's one of the things that I really 
I, I know it. I can feel it in every cell and, and fiber of my body at the end of the day. Um, I, I, I actually am more energized because I'm doing what I know I not only love to do, but I know what I'm meant to be doing is helping people. And uh, that's a very energizing uh, thing that when you know you're, you're right on purpose. So, uh, yeah, I think we need to do more to have fun, to laugh. Uh, boy, you just can't say enough about that. I know you, Dr. David, and Dr. Bernie uh, uh, agree with that wholeheartedly. Right. Absolutely. So there's other ways of handling it. Physically, you know, getting a balanced diet. And uh, I know that uh, Rick um, may be on the call tonight and, and uh, does such a good job in, from a business standpoint. And we talk about these four key things, you know, getting activity, uh, getting oxygen, getting enough uh, adequate hydration, pure water, uh, getting enough superfoods and, and uh, you know, good quality foods and balanced uh, ratios of protein, carbohydrates, and fats and then uh, also uh, getting some uh, intelligent supplementation. Those are all uh, important factors. But we're going to talk in the next few minutes about uh, what it takes to get into a coherent uh, state. And, uh, and again, as this uh, continues to unfold, uh, you'll, you'll understand what an incoherent heart rhythm versus a coherent heart rhythm is, some of the biofeedback technology that HeartMath provides. When you look at uh, the screen, um, you'll see oftentimes when I first purse, and this is exactly what I do in my practice. I'll, I'll say, hey, you're doing good. We did your exam. We did your findings on your spine. Uh, next, I want to look at how your autonomic nervous system is balanced. And I want to uh, just take a look at it. And I don't even tell them much about it. I just hook them up, put, it, put a little clip on their ear, or sometimes you can put it on the finger. And I just say, just sit there and breathe normally, and just, just look at the screen. And oftentimes we see what's on the left. And it's a quite an irregular, jagged pattern. There's no, no real pattern to it. It's just very inconsistent. And oftentimes then we'll go through a process that's relatively easy to do. And uh, we'll, we'll go into a, uh, they'll al almost instantly, maybe not exactly like, you know, black and white like this screen shows, but they'll very quickly, within a, within a minute, go into a nice, smooth, rhythmic sine wave pattern that shows that their heart and their brain are communicating better. And, and they can feel it. And one of the techniques that we use is just exactly how to get in, in touch with that particular um, good heart feeling that they really want to, uh, to have, not the stuff that's going on in this chaotic state. Um, the next book that I was going to re reference is a, a book that's also by Doc Childry and Bruce Cryer, and it's called From Chaos to Coherence. Well, that's exactly what you're seeing on the screen. And uh, the subtitle of that one is The Power to Change Performance. So I think that's what we all want is we want to have those good days. When you think about it, look back and think back about the day that you woke up and you felt like, you know, let's say that you're 55 like me, 54, and uh, now that's probably a bad example because I feel good really every day when I wake up. It's it's a, it's really a good thing. But a lot of people, they get stressed and they're just not feeling so good and they're a little cranky and they're tight and they're they may have you know kicked the bedpost or then they kick the dog and then you know it's downhill from there. And uh, that's what they're going to see on the left hand side. Uh, but if if uh, an individual is staying in a coherent um, pattern, now stuff happens to them. Uh, I kick the bedpost every now and then. Things happen to me. But oftentimes what, what I know how to do is quickly get over to the coherent uh, heart rhythm. It reduces pain. It helps with all kinds of, of uh, issues with our body. When you start to uh, uh, almost feel out of control sometimes, and that's where a lot of people are, is they just, they just feel like they're out of control. They're on the hamster wheel, and, and it's like, get me off this thing. And uh, here's another. I love this picture. Just You can just feel the quiet and the peace. And that's really what we're after is stopping the chaos. Because a lot of us have way too much chaos going on in our mind. And, and that's one of the reasons why we can't sleep, because our minds are going a mile a minute and it stirs the adrenal glands. And all of a sudden when your adrenaline's flowing and your cortisol is high, you're not going to sleep. And so uh, to get into some of these more coherent states, it's a real important thing to, to understand. I think you're getting the feeling for why to do that, and now it's going to be like, okay, well, how do I do this? 
Yeah, because, so, because as you were talking, I'm, I'm thinking, are you, are you talking about being hooked up to a machine that resynchronizes you, or is it just about controlling your imagination? I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah, it's, it's actually both. The biofeedback helps you know that you feel it. The biofeedback machine, I think it's real important to have that technology. I think the, the handheld unit is about uh, 190 or something like that. We'll talk about that at the end of the seminar. But And then the, the, the full model, the PC unit, is I think uh, just under $300. Uh, and, and it does a lot of interesting things. It gives you that feedback. And so it tells you when you're in a coherent state or, or a synchronized state and, and when you're not. And then there's some very simple... Uh, techniques of being able to do it. Everybody can do it. I'll, I'll pretty much guarantee you the first time with, within, I don't think I've ever, and I know I've never failed to within a minute. Some people take a little bit longer because they're so chaotic and they, and they don't realize that they have control. When we show them that, that they can control this, uh, boy, it's quite a relief. And I've had a lot of people that they try it uh, that night uh, before, because they say, I have had trouble going to sleep for 20 years. In fact, I don't sleep very well at all. And they do this, and it's amazing. Uh, they, they come back and they say, I can't believe how much better how I slept really good. I didn't have trouble going to sleep. And, and so really, it, it's literally like flipping the switch. It literally is like that. Now, staying that way, uh, for one thing, staying that way 100% of the time is almost impossible. But but just getting there over and over and over, that is very possible, and it's really a choice once you understand you have that ability. So um, what we're doing is synchronizing the body systems, and it, it does improve mental clarity. They call it uh, cortical facilitation. Uh, it actually helps raise uh, the ability to think, uh, helps raise our energy level, because you know if you're stressed and you're burning off all this energy trying to remember all this stuff, stuff that's going on in your life, and you're pulling all this baggage with you, that's a drain. Uh, and it really allows us to become more creative and, uh, and just have a better uh, problem-solving ability. There's a lot of powerful forces in nature. You know, when you think about the moon, how it pulls the tides in and out, but it's really the natural forces that are within us that are the true healers. And uh, I love that quote. And, and mm -hmm. so the research... The heart mass shows that when you intentionally shift into a positive motion, the heart rhythms immediately change. That's what we're talking about. It's like flipping a switch. It's called cortical facilitation. Doc Childry, uh, founder of Institute of Heart Mass, says since emotional process can work faster than the mind, it actually takes a, uh, a, uh, a power stronger than the mind to bend perception and override these emotional circuits. Because a lot of times people get in these emotional circuits, these loops. But what it provides us with this intuitive feeling, and, and really it takes the power of the heart, uh, which, as we know, it's, very, it's a very powerful force. Uh, we've got all these sayings in our society. Wow, that, that composition, that music or that poet uh, really has a lot of heart, or he gave it all his heart, or uh, what does your heart tell you about this? Uh, these are very powerful things. So um, a little bit more about the definition of coherence. Um, a lot of ways of defining it, but from the science of the heart, uh, it's, it's clarity of thought, emotional balance, a synchronization between multiple uh, systems of our body, and it's an organized patterning within the whole. And uh, so we, we talk about a couple of things in, in coherence, um, heart rhythm coherence, uh, it, oftentimes we're too, way too sympathetically dominant, push, 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 go, go, go. And so we need to slow that down, stop some of the chaos, stop some of the noise, increase that parasympathetic activity, and then that will allow our brain and our heart and, and multiple organ systems to function in a synchronous way. So we call this psychophysiologic coherence. And really what it is is it's a sustained positive motion. How long is it sustained? Well as many times as you can, as long as you can. Uh, when things happen, which they all do, is quickly, I mean, you've got to take care of the emergency, somebody slamming their brakes on in front of you or some kid runs out in front of you. You, gotta, you can't think, okay, now I can't get stressed out on this. You know, you just got to react. And oftentimes it throws you into an adrenal hyper-secreted state and your, your heart's pounding like crazy. Okay, the emergency is over with. Now you get back into that state of coherence. And uh, when you can create that degree of mental and emotional stability over a period of time, it really does have a, an incredible 
uh, it can, in some cases, have an incredible healing effect. This can also have an incredible healing effect. <laughs> Either put yourself here mentally on the beach. When you're wanting to get into that state, uh, you can do that. And you think about the, the best uh, uh, frame of, we're not going to go through the, all the details of what it takes to get coherence, because I think it's really uh, important. I mean, we're covering some of them, but it's real important, I think, to have that uh, feedback, uh, being able to, to, you go through the, the steps of coherence, and then you go through the, um, uh, we call it quick coherence, you, you go through the, uh, uh, the feeling, and then you also see it on, on the screen. And, uh, and it's a, it's a pretty incredible thing. So this specialty, we talk, we talk about neurocardiology. I mentioned it before. The book, Neurocardi Neuro Neurocardiology, Anatomical and Functional Principles by Andrew Armour. Uh, it's groundbreaking research that really tells us that heart is a sensory organ. And a lot of us kind of know that intuitively, but they've proven it. And uh, we know that this heart-brain connection, the heart-brain and it's actually inside the heart. There's a small little brain in there. It's not like our, obviously, our big brain, but it's a collection of all these neurons. It can learn, it can feel, it can sense and remember independently of the cranial brain. And wow. So when, when this opened up to me, you know, it's one of those things where I, like I've said before, I knew it. I didn't actually have the words for it, but I just knew that that was going on, and now they've proven it scientifically. And that area is actually a very, uh, it's a very, fairly new, but it's, it's just growing like crazy, and it's just fascinating to see uh, this, this whole process. Um, our emotions drive our brain and our hormones into either a coherent state or a chaotic state. We know that when you have that feeling of appreciation, care, love, we feel that. And that really, you know, when you, when you think about that, it really is one of the key components in putting us in a good state. And so this, this neuroendocrine system and other systems are organized by these emotions as well. So now um, there is a uh, tutorial, and I want to play this. It's just a real brief one. Um, yeah, we're doing okay on time, aren't we? Sure, absolutely. We're doing good. Go to this tutorial uh, at uh, heartmath.org. Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, heartmath.org, you can see a couple of video streaming programs. This is actually uh, on the M-Wave PC unit. It was formerly called the Freeze Framer, but this is the one that's, uh, I think it's about $300. And um, so we're just going to go to the tutorial because there's all that information on the tutorial. And uh, I'm going to go to the science area. And uh, it's only going to be eight minutes, so just kind of pay attention here. I'm just going to click on these bars below. You're going to put this next to your speaker? Yep. I think the key research discovery in heart math has been the connection from the heart to the brain. Traditionally, we've learned that the brain is in charge of everything, that all the signals come down from the brain, and that the brain is, in fact, the master computer. That its signals come down and influence the heart and the rest of the body, too. The most fascinating thing for me is that the heart, which is in my area of expertise, is the mainframe. It sends abundant signals to the brain, which then sends signals all over the body. It sets the tone. And the interaction of the heart with the brain allows higher centers in the brain to function differently. This bit of information, I think, is the most central piece of research to come out of this area. So that was Bruce Wilson, the cardiologist. And this is exactly what I do with my patients. After, they, after I put them on the, the monitor and I see where they're at, and uh, then I prove to them that they can make that change. Then I show them kind of what we did. The source of the heartbeat is within the heart itself. In the many presentations I've done over the years, I find that about half the people in the audience believe that the brain sends a signal down to the heart, and that is what makes the heartbeat. That's clearly not the case, however. The source of the heartbeat is truly within the heart itself. Electrically speaking, the heart generates by far the largest rhythmic electrical signal in our body. It's about 40 to 60 times more amplitude than what the brain waves are. So every time the heart beats, that electrical wave, the electrical energy permeates every cell in our body. 
We can measure the heartbeat, called the electrocardiogram, by putting an electrode on your little toe, your earlobe, anywhere. So that electrical energy is binding together, in a way, all the cells in the body. We need to learn that our heart has a very central role in setting our emotions, setting our responses, even our perceptions, and setting the entire internal milieu. In other words, there's a different type of physiology that's created by a heart signal that has one pattern compared to a heart signal that has the other pattern. In terms of health, which physiology do we want to bathe ourselves in? Do we want to bathe ourselves in stressful physiology that creates the production of lots of hormones that raise our blood pressure and have many other widespread effects? Or do we want to bathe ourselves in the type of physiology that's really quite beneficial to us? There are many nerve pathways sending information back to the brain from the body. These are called sensory systems. They sense things. What's our blood chemistry? How much air is in the lungs? These types of things. They are a very important part of our physiology. As it turns out, the heart is uniquely connected to the brain and is truly a sensory organ. It senses things. So it's not just the brain sending information down to the heart. The heart also sends information through the nerve, nervous system back to the brain as well. When we record the actual nerves, the heart sends more signals to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. So it's truly a two-way communication system. They are two independent main organs that affect each other. Certainly, if we perceive something as stressful or fearful, that will send signals down to the heart and the rest of the body that will change the way the heart's beating and the patterns of it. But also, changes within the heart affect the way the brain processes as well. The story gets a lot more interesting, though. Starting back in the 1960s, researchers started developing equipment and ways of looking more closely at these interactions. And what they found was that the information the heart sends to the brain did a lot more than just regulating basic physiological functions in the body. In fact, these signals cascaded up into our higher brain centers and affected our perception, even our visual fields, the way we thought and felt. They came up with two terms to describe the effects the heart was having on our cortex and brain function. One is called cortical inhibition, and the other cortical facilitation. In other words, certain types of information that the heart is sending to the brain literally inhibits the way our brain functions or facilitates it. In the writings of these researchers, they described the heart as if the heart had a mind of its own. But what they didn't know then, and what we know now, is that the heart has a very complex nervous system of its own. We now have to talk about the heart as having its own intrinsic brain. And there's a whole new field that studies this. It's called neurocardiology. So there's a very complex nervous system and brain within the heart itself that can and does function independent of the brain. It's why a heart transplant can work. That little brain in the heart goes with the heart when it's transplanted. An important new tool for looking at how the information flows between the heart and the brain, which helps us start to understand and unravel some of the mysteries here, is a technique that we call heart rate variability, or heart rhythm analysis. When we plot our heart rhythms over time, we find that our heart rate, if we're healthy, changes with every heartbeat, and complex patterns emerge. These patterns are different based on how we're feeling. So now that we know we have a nervous system in our heart, and this communication system exists, we can start to understand why we associate our hearts with feelings. When we ask people where they experience positive feelings, most people point to their chest. So now we're starting to understand why that's true. There really is a nervous system and a little brain in the heart and a whole communication system that explains this. So by looking at our heart rhythms, we can start to unravel this information flow. For example, when we get frustrated or angry, really any type of negative emotion, the rhythmic beating patterns start to look jerky and edgy, much more so than a normal pattern would. This effect on our brain is to inhibit the cortex, so we can't think as clearly. So this is the physiology of why when we're angry or upset, we don't make decisions as well as we would have 
if I recall. Heart rate variability, as it turns out, has a couple of different signatures, if you will. There are a couple of different patterns. When the heart rate variability signal has a certain signature, it may look sort of jaggedy and rough. It's sort of a marker for our emotional state and our biochemical state inside. Heart rate variability can have a markedly different signature, however. And when it assumes a very regular waveform, like a sine wave, it's actually sending a different type of information to our body and to our brain. This information has a lot to do with how we feel, and it's also set by how we feel. In other words, a positive emotional state can change this signature that we are measuring with the heart rate variability tool, and we can see how it sends a different pattern throughout the system. Now the key is, how do we switch it from one pattern to another? That's the basis of the heart math techniques. Once we learn to throw the switch, we can alter the information that spreads throughout our bodies. In terms of wellness, in terms of an opportunity to interrupt certain physiology and promote beneficial physiology, we now have a simple process that will allow us to cross over from one type of signal to another and do it quite easily. All right, so that's a real simple way of being able to explain this process. Now I'm going to go down to where we left off here. Um, and really, in literally eight minutes, it kind of summarized pretty much what we've gone through here. And um, so let's go to the next slide here. Here we are. Um, yeah, so uh, how can we create this and practice it? The, the, the feedback is kind of like you, you need an electrocardiogram in order to get the electrical signals from the heart. You really, you can check a person's pulse, but it may not be very accurate in terms of telling you all the things that are going on electrically with the heart. And it's the same way with the, uh, the M-Wave PC or the uh, personal stress reliever is the little portable unit. You don't have to have a personal computer. Um, Christiane Northrup, I think a lot of uh, people recognize uh, that woman's uh, name. She was the author of Women's Body, Women's Body's um, Women's Wisdom. Uh, nearly every disease or illness that I've seen or treated in the last two decades of medical practice could have been improved or even cured had my patients or I known how to access the physical power of the heart's intelligence. Heart Math is the owner's manual that we've been waiting for to help us recognize and use our heart's energy to help heal our body and our lives. So the Institute uh, is really committed to increase, Institute of Heart Math uh, is committed to increasing the world's body of scientific knowledge. That's one of the reasons why I like these guys. They're, they're a, a group of scientists and they, they have a great connection with a lot of people uh, around the world that help with the scientific body of knowledge, promoting this heart-based living. The Global Coherence Project is what I mentioned before, um, that you can go to www.heartmath.org and then just use the search box and type in Global Coherence. It's an amazing project, um, and it's, it's free to join and get the emails and all that. And so, but it also they help with the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being of this greater community of human beings. Um, this is uh, what we do here. We, we have a couple of different programs. One is the uh, quick one. Uh, I kind of hesitated to use quick fix because, you know, obviously we're not going to fix it to people with uh, 20 years of stress in, in one hour. But it, what it does is we give a person a, a, a little booklet and a workbook, and, uh, and then they, uh, it's, it, it's based on the coaching model of this uh, heart math program. And, and typically they, they pick up either the PC unit or the um, personal stress reliever portable unit. And then there's the four-hour session, four one-hour sessions. That's what I did when I first started this. I really wanted to get in depth uh, into this program, and um, so there's a lot of uh, 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 really good uh, programs out there. I was just looking for my uh, uh, my full manual uh, that uh, that took us through that first um, four-hour program. I actually had not met um, Carolyn. Uh, she was um, uh, a, a practitioner out in uh, Illinois. She was certified. Uh, by the Institute of Heart Math, and so that's all I needed to know. And so she took us through this program 
still have never met her. Uh, we just did it on the phone. So it's really nice. I just sent away, got the manuals, got the books, and did the, the homework. And uh, and so it was it was uh, a, a really very rewarding program. They just opened up this whole world to me. And uh, uh, Leslie and my uh, website is heartminds.com. That, that was her idea. She's got a great heart and a great mind. And so uh, you can go and look at a little bit of things there. You can see some of the pictures of the um, M-Wave uh, PC. And then there's my phone number um, in Longmont and then her phone number up in Calgary. We both do long-distance coaching. And uh, I'll put the screen back up uh, at the very end if somebody didn't, didn't get all that. So one of the things that we do uh, from a work standpoint, a lot of industries out there, you know, again, that's that push, 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 go, 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 come on, produce, keep, keep going. We help companies reduce this program or this problem uh, called uh, absenteeism, but a, a word that I wasn't familiar with is presenteeism. And uh, I actually thought presenteeism was a good thing. No, it's not. Presenteeism it means that a person shows up, they're not feeling very good, they're either sick or they're totally just disconnected, they're, they're distracted, and, and they're, they're there, but they're really not there. And that, that's dangerous in, in certain job situations. So it, 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 the presenteeism actually impacts industry a huge amount because that's where uh, injuries occur and that's where uh, mistakes occur that cost the industry a lot of money. Obviously being sick and, and or being depressed or being stressed causes them to be just gone. That's absenteeism. But one of the worst, it's almost worse showing up and yet, you know, the lights are on but nobody's home type of thing. Uh, and then high rate turnover, that's what we find in emergency rooms and people that are under a lot of stress. Uh, air traffic controllers, pilots, and that type of thing um, it increases that uh, um, uh, turnover rate. So we help to, to lower that down and increase productivity and, and putting a cost to this health care crisis that we find ourselves in. Uh, I think stress is, uh, is a big part of that. It's at the root of a lot of these uh, issues. So take a breath, relax. <laughs> uh, I love some of these uh, just pictures that kind of take us out of our, I think sometimes it's nice to take like a three minute uh, little power break and uh, have some of these pictures on your computer or have them somewhere. Um, the, the executive editor of Natural Health Magazine, Bill Thompson, said that this change in heartbeat and, and produces a chemical and electrical change in the body, yeah, and if it were a pill, it would be called the most important medical discovery of the century. And uh, some think that this heart math may be anyway, in any case. Doc Chillery again said that the technology has now helped thousands of individuals from many walks of life lead a more productive, healthy, and fulfilling life by learning to live more with heart and mind in synchrony, operating from a constructive synergy of the intelligence of both mind and heart. You know, you, you can just hear the the coherent state. You know, coherence was a, is a visual term also, and it means to see clearly. And these guys have a, a really nice vision for the way they want things to be in, in the world and in, in our lives. And, and I think a lot of people, and this is one of the reasons why I got licensed in this, and I try and mention it with everybody at one point during their treatment program. And, and in fact, oftentimes I'll just take a person into the room and I'll, and I'll just hook them up. It'll take about a minute to find out where their balance is in their autonomic nervous system. And uh, it's such an important part, I think, this whole uh, a balance. So, now, the, you, you talk about the, the DPA machine, too. How do you use the, the two of them together? Excellent question. Uh, that, that's really interesting that his whole thing kind of came about. The digital pulse wave analysis is uh, what Dr. Harry talked about in depth, and, and I also became a certified technician. I love technology, and, and this is a way to measure with laser-like precision because it is a laser. It's a light laser that measures the arterial compliance. So it measures how flexible or how stiff the arteries are and gives us a grading of the person's uh, cardiovascular system. So, for example, um, I do a lot to take care of myself. I'm 54, and I measured as a 25-year-old. Uh, actually, it was a 35-year-old, uh, the flexibility of my arteries. But I said, you know what? There's room for improvement. So I'm not just happy with, okay, yeah, I'm half my age or close to half my age. 
Um, so I wanted to continue to move it down, and so that's why we started on doing some, some intervention of some things that help to improve cardiovascular flexibility like the, the arginine amino acid. And, but what's nice about the DPA machine is it also embraces heart rate variability. And so there's both the certification uh, process in, in becoming a te technician in the uh, digital pulse wave analysis. I think that machine is about 7,000, something like that. But then you go through the training, and it really doesn't take a lot of training, maybe a week or two, to get good training. And then Dr. Harry does the licensing. But you also can get licensed and, and uh, or rather trained as a technician in this heart rate variability. It's not exactly the same as the, the training in, in heart math. I would typically recommend uh, both. But what's cool about the uh, digital pulse wave uh, machine, and that's a machine that Meridian Medical uh, produces up in, up in Canada. Uh, it's a great one for cardiovascular flexibility. But as, as the reason why you brought that up is because I think you remember that that machine also measures heart rate variability. And it has a great uh, graphic uh, uh, pr that pr it produces on the printer that kind of la lays it out and a person can see what their um, heart rate variability and, and kind of what the balance of their autonomic nervous system is like. But the Institute of Heart Math produces a separate hardware, and that's the M-Wave PC, the personal computer, and then the personal stress reliever. That's the portable unit that you can take with you in your in your travel bags, or I sometimes even clip clip it on uh, my ear um, in the car uh, because it's very uh, uh, easy to just listen to it, or it's it's a color coloration change on the machine or a or a tone tonal change. So on that, um, by just hooking it up, it gives your body coherence. It synchronizes everything up. So yeah, so what it does then, it, it gives you the feedback, and it tells you where you're at. So if a person, which oftentimes they say, uh, I don't think I like where I'm at. I got too much chaos. I got too much. So then we, we take them through, and this is what the the uh, uh, training is about. It, and again, it doesn't take very long. The one training is, is about an hour, but um, you do need, need to learn a little bit about the biofeedback uh, technology. And then I think the rest of it is just it comes in practice. So the machine does not add anything to the body. I, I, now I'm remembering where you were going with this. Uh, the machine simply is a biofeedback. It's actually getting information from your body, and it just reads it, and it tells you, here's where your state of uh, coherence is. You're either in a, oh. a low, medium, or high state of coherence. So if you're in a high state of coherence, that's good. You want that good brain uh, heart synchronization. But oftentimes what people find is, especially in certain situations, and sometimes when you put yourself on the machine and then you go back to a, maybe a stressful state in your mind, and then you say, oh, wow, that really throws my whole system way off there. And then so you can actually work on uh, bringing yourself into a coherent state, yet keeping that same thing in mind. So there's a there's workbooks that, that go through that process and and uh, booklets that, um, for example, one of the booklets I'm um, just moving out to my front desk and looking at one is called Transforming Depression, Transforming Anxiety, Transforming Anger, um, the heart math approach to hypertension. Uh, these are all um, things that we take people through, and, and there, there's a workbook that goes along with them so they can then uh, go through the process of, of you know regularly practicing and actually seeing from the biofeedback that they're getting into that state. And then it's just a matter of continuing to reinforce that, because as we know, the nervous system, the more you do it, the more it learns it. Okay. Dr. Steve? Yes. Um, somebody was wondering if they were interested in becoming a heart math practitioner. What's the process of getting certified in that? Yeah, so they do. Um, the first thing typically is go through the, uh, the, the four one-hour sessions, and uh, the um, the workbook can be mailed to them, and and uh, the couple of uh, books, uh, the uh, um, Heart Math Solution, just so they can understand the background behind that. And then we just take them through those uh, four hours. We, we schedule a time, and we we do a consultation on the phone, and uh, they go through a step-by-step -step process. And once they understand it completely. And if they say, uh, I love this stuff, I, I'm, I can't help but tell uh, my, my family, my friends, or if they're a practitioner, health practitioner here, I, I found the, 
the uh, it's called the Voyage to Heart Intelligence. Uh, this is our what we used to call the manifest. Um, it's a it's a very large workbook, and that took us through that first four hour training. And then if if a person says, well, I want to get licensed, there's a three day intensive program out in uh, Boulder Creek, California, and they would just contact um, the institute there, and, and they can find it going to uh, www.heartmath.org. They can get those phone numbers there. Okay, great. Also, somebody was wondering about if you use the DPA machine to measure the ANS. Yeah, um, it does. It, it's it's that's the autonomic nervous system. So that's actually what the uh, one of the things that that machine does, and you can get um, certified as both a DPA technician reading the cardiovascular system, but also then the autonomic nervous system, and and uh, it's a it's a different. Uh, training and and uh, it's similar to what we've talked about here, um, but it's 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 uh, they don't have as comprehensive a program in terms of training and what uh, you know what the um, technology that uh, HeartMath goes through uh, in their uh, their um, HeartMath the whole workbooks and all that they don't they don't have that but they do have the ability to measure heart rate variability and the autonomic nervous system balance. That's that's what you're asking. So, um, but most, in fact, all most of my staff has gotten the certification in the um, digital pulse wave analysis, and I just happen to want to take it a step further. I just found out about this actually while I was going to my training that that machine also measures heart rate variability, and so. But the the um, the little units that uh, I mean, the, if you don't have to pay seven thousand dollars. That's the good news about the heart math is it's uh, hundred and ninety-nine dollars for the um, the per, um, the portable unit, the personal stress reliever, and it's two ninety-nine for the full um, uh, personal computer unit. And that's got all the buzzer. That's got the training that I showed you. Some of the uh, I just showed you just a little bit. Eight minutes. It's got hours and hours of the uh, tutorials and things like that. So, um, but you do that typically if a person wants to get certified, and they actually go out to the institute. Great, mm. thank you. Great. All right. Oh. How are we doing on Anyone? time? Um, we're, we're doing we're doing okay. Um, any more questions, Ashley? Uh, it looks like you've answered all the questions. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, we probably haven't answered all the questions, but all the questions <laughs> have been typed in. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> Well, I tell you, it's it's been a a really great thing for us, and it's there's not too many days that Leslie and I. Uh, I mean, we're we're on the phone two or three times a day, and emailing, and we'll talk with each other because right now she's up in Calgary, and I'm in well, I'm on Colorado, and and soon. Uh, we'll be um, joining each other for uh, Thanksgiving holidays. We'll be going off to uh, Mexico, and so next year we're looking at actually finally uh, being in one country at the same time for a long period of time. <laughs> so, but there's not too many days that go by that we don't incorporate this type of training in in our communication, and you know, really, it's it, it kind of becomes a, a, a way of life in terms of you know trying to speak as much from your heart as possible. And a lot of times, I think, in our society, we tend to, um, you know, push people away and, and maybe not um, not communicate as more completely and as, on, not necessarily, it's not necessarily honestly, it's really, what, what is it you feel, you know, in, in your heart? How do you feel about this? And that's a, that's a tough thing for a lot of people, I think, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to speak from because there's, they're so, not used to being in their heart; they're used to in being in their head. <laughs> That's and true. Uh, and I think that uh, you know, guys like I say are probably more notorious about that. Um, and I I, I learned uh, a hard lesson uh, a few years ago. You know, just getting out of my head and into my heart. And I think that's where a lot of people, uh, you know, you start seeing um, as as I've gone around. North America and, and internationally as well, and 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 become uh, I think a little bit better speaker. It's it's all about just being yourself, you know, speaking from the heart. And uh, at the very beginning, I probably wasn't doing much of that. It's more up in a 
not necessarily a superficial level, but more just on the intelligence level and just not talking about some of the things that have a true impact on my life and then, therefore, then others' lives. And, and that interconnection really is through the heart. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. Um, well, there's so much we need to learn, isn't there? Yeah. So, Sherry, do you want me, or is there some way that uh, I need to turn over control of the... Or do we just want to leave this last slide up? We can just leave yeah. this last slide up. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Well, thanks, guys, for uh, having me on. Thank you very much, Dr. Steve. And, folks, uh, we, we appreciate you being on the webinar. And we will continue to correspond with you. We, uh, we're, we're looking at some very interesting, nice technological stuff. I don't know anything about it. Sherry is the one who does the technological stuff. But um, as we mentioned weeks ago, we are going to, going to archive most of these calls. Uh, right now, we're starting with the MP3s because that's easier to do. And you, you combine an MP3 and a slide presentation, PowerPoint presentation, that's it's not the same thing as watching the webinar itself, but it's a close. It comes a close second. And besides, you can convert the MP3 into a CD, which you can play in your car. So that that's just an added advantage to that. Um, we we are looking to get some very some interesting people on our, on our webinar soon, and I'm going to probably be doing some more. Like um, the more Dr. Steve was talking about this, I realized that we don't have a class on the cardiovascular system. And I think that it's, it would be really good to actually have a class that really goes through the basics of the cardiovascular system, understand, uh, to help people understand how the cardiovascular system works, how the heart is, how the heart works, and the blood vessels work, and what you need to do to ensure that those blood vessels are uh, flexible and uh, strong throughout your midlife. To your your later life, because I think there's a lot that needs to be learned for, without concern. And we we the bo we mentioned arginine is very important, of course, and of course stress relief. But there are other things that will help to make your heart system work, um, your cardiovascular system work well. Um, again, we just want to thank you. you. We know that you could have been anywhere else, but instead you've sat down for an hour, one hour in front of a computer, and we appreciate that about you. Uh, wish you a wonderful weekend, and uh, if we don't see you before then, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Do you want to say anything else? Uh, just good night, <laughs> and check the oh. website if the if you're interested in. At the beginning of the call, Dr. David mentioned the presentation that we had from Dr. Harry, and it there right. are uh, there's links on the home page to both the handout and MP3. So, Dr. David, um, did this get recorded tonight? Yes, it did. Yes. Cool. So, Rick, uh, if he didn't make it on, then we can direct him to that place, or anybody else, obviously. Right, right. We'll, um, we'll, we'll be working on that soon. Yeah. Terrific. Thanks, guys. Good night. All right. Thank you. Good night, everyone.